Southern Afghanistan, famous for its poppies, the Taliban, and some of this war's toughest battles. Lieutenant General James Terry is the operational commander of the war. He agreed to take us into the notorious Horn of Panjway to see where things stand 11 years into this war. Where are we all right now? Essentially, this is the Taliban homeland. You're headed right into it. We head over rich farmlands in Kandahar province to forward operating base Masangar, making our way atop a strategically important hilltop. This is looking back down over the district of Panjway. It's a place Taliban fighters largely controlled until the U.S. troop surge of 2010. They actually got in here and got into a pretty significant fight. Uh, a couple thousand uh, Taliban, uh, the Task Force Orion, along with a uh, uh, Task Force 31, actually then came in and started clearing out uh, these areas on both sides of, of this terrain feature. Coalition officials say it is no longer a Taliban safe haven. Attacks are way down and roads are again passable. But as we witness firsthand, <coughs> insurgents are still active. An explosion followed by a firefight erupted just below us. What's the biggest risk right now? What's how is the Taliban attacking? Frankly, they go hold us. You got you got small groups out there uh, trying to stop movement like this uh, from coming through. That's the primary concern right now. The price of gaining the upper hand here and across Afghanistan has been high. 2,100 American lives since the start of the war, most killed in the last three years. The dollar price tag, $420 billion. Polls say the majority of Americans are ready for the war to end now, but what soldiers here sense from home is not opposition, but indifference. In voter surveys, the war barely ranks among top national concerns, and it is rarely mentioned on the campaign trail, as the number of Americans killed this year approaches 270. On patrol outside Kandahar, Corporal Jesse Flores is aware of waning interest in the war, but remains focused. I, I'm not surprised with that. How much they forgot about it, you know? I mean, it's been a long time, but uh, we, we still see a lot of support out there, and you know, we appreciate it. Mohammed Salim. With the planned end of most coalition operations here now just two years away, there is great urgency to train Afghan security forces. The numbers are on track, over 300,000 so far. Despite concerns about the quality of recruits and shortfalls in some key capabilities, U.S. commanders say the handoff is real and it is happening. They are in the lead. They're the ones that are taking the majority of any casualties when we come in contact with the enemy. General Terry says the Afghan forces and the U.S. exit plan are on track. But from this vantage point above the Taliban heartland, it's not the exit, but how we got here that's on his mind. I just spent my third 9-11 uh, anniversary here. And uh, I often ask myself, you know, this, this area, especially back across that terrain feature there, is uh, Tarnock Farms where Al-Qaeda used to, to train and eventually launch attacks into the U.S., what you can count are how many have been prevented by the presence here. Brigadier General Steph Twitty is the Deputy Chief of Staff of Communications for the International Security Assistance Force here in Afghanistan. General, welcome. Great to have you on. And we, we should note, some of our viewers may think you look familiar. We're going to explain why in just a moment, because you have a history, certainly, with NBC. But I want to start off by asking you about the green on blue attacks. It's been a, uh, there's been a lot of focus on that recently. We know there were some changes, some adjustments made in terms of the partnership with Afghan troops. Where does it stand right now? Are you at full tempo again? Yes, let me talk about the, uh, the force protection po uh, posture. We continually assess our force protection posture here in the theater. And when we see things that may threaten our soldiers, we heighten our uh, force protection posture. In this case, we saw the uh, Innocence of Muslim video come out, and we saw the, the demonstrations and the riots going on around the Muslim world. And we were concerned about it spilling over here in Afghanistan. And so, we took the recommendation to General Allen uh, based on what we saw as the threat, and he made the decision to pull back 
in order to ensure that we protect our forces. Now, of course, the, the whole aim here is to work with those Afghan forces Absolutely. to get them up to speed. Is this, is this going to cause any meaningful pause in getting to the goal? No, it will not, because we did not stop partnering. And that's what I want to make clear. We're constantly moving our force protection posture. General Allen has done this several times. Uh, this time, it seemed to get uh, media attention, but we've done this several times since I've been here. We are part, uh, partners. We will continue to partner, and we'll always stay with our Afghan partners. All right, General, I noted that you seem familiar to a lot of our viewers. That's because you, of course, were part of that third ID march into Baghdad, the point of the spear, uh, back with our, our dear friend David Bloom. Uh, and now this is your fifth deployment over, overseas. You know, I, I've said I've found a lot of soldiers who've been in similar situations, and I asked them, you know, haven't you given enough? What's the answer? No, I haven't. I love soldiering, and I love uh, uh, serving my country. Uh, and this is a commitment not only that I've given, but my family's given. And so I love being here, and I'll stay here as long as uh, the job is required. You know, at the beginning of the broadcast, I talked about the things that weren't around. Uh, when the war broke out. One of them are these, one of the vehicles behind me, these mine protection vehicles. The Army has transformed thoroughly from a Cold War Army to where we are now. Talk about, reflect on the last 11 years. Absolutely fantastic vehicles you see behind me. When I conducted uh, major combat operations as part of 3rd Infantry Division, and we crossed the berm, we did not have these vehicles. We had soft 10 Humvees. And that's how we conducted operations and packed them into Baghdad. And paid a price. And we did pay a price. So it is great to have these vehicles. They're magnificent pieces of equipment. Uh, we're glad our soldiers are using them. All right. Well, General, it's great to see you again. Thanks so much. Thanks for your Good service. Good to see you as well. Appreciate it. Thanks for well. All right, we're going to send it back to you, Tamron, in the airport. Before we do that, I want to let folks know, if you have a question for me about what I've seen, what we've done here so far, I'd be lucky to tweet it to me. We'll try to answer some at the end of the end of the broadcast. It's Lester Holt, NBC, on Twitter. And Tamron, for now, we'll send it back to you. All right, Lester, great reporting there. And now to Tennessee, where authorities are searching for two children presumed dead when their home was destroyed by an intense fire.